One of the things we're going to want to look at with our armamentarium is the type of needle that we're using. So needles come in all different lengths, and that's specifically what this video is going to be about, is the length of the needle. Now, some practitioners will say, you know what, I only use short needles. That's the only thing I use. You know, I use a smaller gauge, 30 short, and uh, I do them because, you know, patients will be more comfortable and it's easier just to stock one needle. Well, yeah, I mean, that's an okay approach, but you probably want to have a variety of needles for a variety of different reasons. If you've watched through our other videos in the course or you're going to get to some of these, I'm going to talk more in depth about some of the features of these. But today, just specifically length. Now, what are we talking about? Well, we've got the extra short needle. We've got a short needle. Uh, this is, of course, a 30. This is a 30 gauge, 27 long and a 25 long. Now, <clears throat> these are important to kind of study a little bit because it'll give you a reference point once your needle breaches the tissue. So when your needle goes through the tissue, you're now going to kind of lose track of how much penetration you have into the tissues. Now, it's easy to get wrapped up in the textbook reading, you know, okay, you're doing this PSA block, you want to go in, you know, 16 millimeters, you know, and be all precise, right? But this kind of stuff doesn't really apply too much in real life practice. So what you want to do is know where you're trying to get to and use whatever's appropriate to get to that location. So really, instead of memorizing all these numbers for depths of penetration, how much needle should be out from the tissue, that sort of thing, just get real familiar with the anatomy. You know, have a dry skull. That's the best thing you can do. Get an anatomically correct dry skull. Kind of look around, look at it from the angles that you're normally looking at a patient, palpate it, um, get a sense for where you're going to be placing the needle in and actually how far you'd have to go in. Just visualize it. It made a huge difference for me when I got out of school and I started to do that. So anyways, without further ado, here we are. So we've got our needles here, all different lengths, starting with the extra short needle. This is a great one for a couple different injections. One is the PDL injection. Now, when you're doing a PDL injection, you're going to be applying a ton of pressure, um, lots and lots of pressure. So when you're doing that, in order to keep the needle seated properly and get the pressure that's necessary to get that solution to go down into the bone, um, you need to have a shorter needle because if you're using a really long needle, try it sometime. Try a long needle to do a PDL injection. It's almost impossible. The short needle, yeah, you can get away with it. Certainly, if you put some bends in the needle, you might have even more success or if you kind of place your thumb over top of the hub as you're trying to push down and, and add a little bit more stability to it, I guess, as you're injecting. But that's exactly what's going to happen. A lot of times the needle's going to bend and it's going to just displace out from um, the sulcus and you're going to get anesthetic leaking out from around the tooth. So the short needle, being shorter, is not as bendy. So it has more rigidity to it. It's going to allow you to kind of push down more to get in and, and get a more successful PDL injection. The 30 gauge short needle, which is this guy right here, is arguably one of the most used needles in dentistry. So a lot of dentists will use these because we're doing infiltrations a lot of the time and you don't need a lot of tissue penetration to get the anesthetic where you need it to go. There will also be dentists who will use this, like I mentioned, for their blocks and pretty much anything. So um, really it's a personal preference. Um, one tip that I can share with you though about this 30 gauge short is if you look at a tooth, so this is a upper second premolar, somewhat anatomically correct, it's from a deniform, so um, not perfect. If you do endo, you're gonna know that a lot of times these teeth are gonna fall in the range of maybe 20 to 23 millimeters from the occlusal surface to the tip of the root. So one thing to think about is you've got 13 millimeter length on your extra short, you've got 20 millimeters of length from the hub to the tip of the needle, on your short, and then your long needles are 32 millimeters from the hub to the tip. So when you insert, say above your second premolar and maxilla, and you go up to the occlusal surface with your hub, you're gonna see that most times the tip of the needle is gonna be resting somewhat near the apex. Now this one is, I guess, a little bit shorter um, than your average tooth, but most teeth are going to be just about the length of that. So you can kind of gauge that you want to be about hub at the occlusal surface, perhaps just a little bit beyond that um, to make sure that your anesthetic is above the apex of the tooth. 
and blocking out all the innervation that's coming down into it. So kind of a neat tip, something that I didn't really ever learn in school, but kind of picked up on in practice, and it's made quite a difference for me. Last but not least are the long needles. Again, you're gonna be doing blocks with these typically. So anywhere you need to reach a little ways into the tissues, it's best to use these guys in my opinion. The reason for that is just that again, you're not gonna be hubbing the needle. So you're gonna have some needle coming out from the tissue just to give you that little bit of padding, I guess, should anything go awfully awry with the patient moving very suddenly or a needle having to shear off um, as you're doing an injection. So the longs, usually your blocks, your inferior alveolar nerve block, it's a great one for that. Again, 32 millimeters of length on them which gives you a bit of an idea as to just how deep you are into the tissues. Now you should get a bit of an idea too, just eyeballing, right? Like kind of think about 32 millimeters. What does that look like? So say like you've got a third of that needle sticking out, it's about 10 millimeters, right? So kind of gauge that a little bit. That'll help with your reference points when you're inserting into the tissues um, and try to get in your mind's eye before you do one of these blocks, just looking at the thickness of the tissue, size of the patient, that kind of thing as to how deep you're actually going to need to penetrate and see if it lines up once you put the needle in uh, as to how much is protruding out from the tissues.